Hi, if you click this video, then that means you've seen my TikTok about me saying I've been kicked out, I went to jail, and I'm now homeless. Either you've seen that or you've just seen the thumbnail or the title and you just are curious and you want me to explain my story. So you came to the right place. I'm going to tell everything. It was just hard for me to kind of really explain what happened on TikTok because you don't get many seconds to like explain a whole entire story so and also i believe it's loud in the background i pray to god that you can hear me um i can't really worry about quality and how i look and stuff like that i just have to tell my truth and i just hope you guys can hear me very clearly i'll put the other airpod in my ear but this one's broke. I got out of jail and for some reason this is broke. I didn't even take my AirPods. Like when I was arrested, I didn't have my AirPods. I only had my phone. So I don't know how I have now broken AirPods. Probably my brother. More on that later. But yeah, let me put this in. Hopefully you guys can hear me better. But enough rambling. Let's get into it. So well i don't even know where to start like where do you start um so my mom already had plans to get me kicked out like she didn't want me there anymore she expressed that to me every single day and i totally understand like because me and my mom we would fight every single day basically every single day not like fist fight or anything but she would say something and then i would say something or on some days i would say something and then she would say something um i don't think my mom wanted to be the bigger person ever like ever so growing up it was kind of hard for me to have respect for her unfortunately and I know that's going to trigger a lot of you moms right now because I know you guys are like I pay the bills no like not me I'm, I'm saying you guys are saying you guys pay the bills you gave me life you know I, I know how a, a mother thinks you know your home your rules and stuff like that but growing up as a child it was just so hard for me to conform to, to rules and laws. I was just, I felt like just a lost child and I'm just born into a world that I don't really like. And just being told, do this, do that. And I just rebelled. I rebelled to every single thing, every single thing. And my dad would always tell me, you reap what you sow, you made your bed, now you have to lay in it. and. As a kid, I would always look at him like he's crazy. I'm like, what is he telling me all this poetry for? And now I understand exactly what he means. But as a kid, my intentions were never to hurt anybody. My intentions was just to live this life that I was just born into. And in the process of doing that, I hurt a lot of people. I hurt my mom, I hurt my dad, I hurt my brothers and my sisters. I only have one brother, I'm sorry, I said brothers. I hurt my brother and my sisters and my family because they were constantly being called by my parents and getting told more and more and more bad news. And, you know, as a kid, I always felt like I could never make anyone proud. I was always just letting people down. I was always just getting in trouble. Gosh, this story is all over the place. I just don't even know where to start. So, yeah, I think as a kid, I had that typical rebel story where I didn't want to, I didn't want to follow the rules. Sorry, guys, I was looking at something out my window. I didn't want to follow the rules. I didn't come from a place of appreciation. I came from a place of frustration. And um, the years went by and the relationship with my parents grew worse and worse and worse. Eventually my dad stopped speaking to me at all. We were living in the same house and he didn't speak to me for like a whole entire year, I believe. A whole year. He knew I was, I started failing my, my classes and he didn't say anything. I started smoking weed. 
he knew about it. He didn't say anything. This was like my junior year of high school. I started hanging out with this girl who just would get me to even, she would get me into even more trouble, but it was like my first time doing things that I never did before. Like I would sneak out with her. I was always linking with guys, hanging out with guys with her. I think I was, I started smoking with her too. She was like, I love her, but I had to cut her off because, you know, like, she's not doing anything for me or my growth anymore. I needed her at that time, but I don't need anyone who doesn't have my best interest at heart. I really hope you guys can hear me because I'm not editing this video. I'm just going to put it on YouTube. And if it's very like bad where nobody can hear a word I'm saying and then I'm gonna take it down but I just need to let my truth just flow out of my mouth right now I just need to release I might I might cry like I might scream but I just need you guys to understand what happened so back to junior year um by then by junior year 16 17 years old i was already yeah my relationship with my dad was completely broken he stopped speaking to me and things that i would do to get in trouble lying talking back just not following the rules i even sent nudes in middle school i sent nudes i got exposed and my dad happened to see those nudes without me wanting him to so i already know that broke his heart like Every single bad thing that you can imagine, I was doing, except like, like criminal stuff, like I, like not killing and robbing and stuff. I was just being a real crazy ass teenage girl, and I wish my dad knew at the time. Like, I, the more I acted crazy, the more love I wanted from him, but the less love I started to receive, and then I just started to receive more hate, more disappointment from him, more frustration, more disgust. I just felt ashamed of even existing. I felt like he didn't want me as a daughter. It, it was it was rough. So, um, yes, after, at the end of my junior year, when I was failing all my classes and smoking weed, and my dad was just completely neglecting me, like, like he wasn't even talking to me, even though we lived in the same house. And um, he even stopped talking to my mom because she was the she was always defending me, and I felt like my dad wanted me to suffer, but my mom would always be there to defend me. So eventually, he stopped even. Their relationship broke apart too, and I think to this day, my dad believes I'm the reason their relationship ended. I'm the reason his life is the way it is. I'm the reason. I'm the reason. I'm the reason. So imagine being in high school. And feeling like you are the reason that your dad's life is terrible. And I just wanted to be daddy's little girl. <laughs> Hold on, you guys. I just wanted to be his little girl. I, I just wanted his love. I just, I just wanted his love. But okay, the end of my junior year is when hold on hold on hold on okay the end of junior year of high school 2019 is when my mom told me tiana you're changing schools we're moving and i'm leaving your dad and then that happens and I left school I was so happy to leave that school I was so happy to leave that school I hated the school that I went to it was just oh the girls hated me so much everybody called me a thought everybody called me a hoe and looking back on it I think it was just the way that I presented myself I wanted the attention so bad I wanted the attention I wanted attention I wanted attention I wanted a boy's attention so bad I just wanted attention and yeah but I was the hoe of the school the thought of the school the slut you name it whatever name you name it so I was just so, super happy to leave that school uh, I'm only talking about family trauma 
the school trauma high school trauma that's a whole nother story but we're gonna get into that maybe i'll make another video but yeah so my mom told me she's leaving my dad and i was happy but i was heartbroken but i was happy happy to be getting away and moving into the unknown but heartbroken because i know how hard this will be for everybody so okay it's 20 it's the end of 2019 i officially moved to a different town it's not like a far away it's just the next town over but it's still like very different compared to the town i lived in the town i moved to was more like a farmland type vibes and like more white people and more richer people but at the same time it was still very similar to the town i'm from it was just a little it was just the next town over you know it was a little different so i moved there we have christmas break i start getting high like all day every day i just wanted to be high i was always freaking high um it was weed by the way in case you were wondering i never really did any other drugs not really no i never did any other drugs besides weed and nicotine like those little e-cigs that our generation has just got into unfortunately but yeah i was smoking weed all the fucking time i had carts i was i was at my new school in the bathroom getting high when i was new there everybody would ask for my cart i would let everybody use it i was known as the girl with the cart we was all just getting high but um yeah so i was in school i still didn't give a fuck about school anymore like my last year at my old school i stopped giving a fuck because i started smoking weed and when i started smoking weed i lost my motivation for everything so um of course that's how it happens it's like n nothing's gonna radically change which i thought it would i thought when i moved to this new school oh everything's gonna change and then you see like wow new location but the same problems the same pain the same trauma nothing changed the only thing that changed was that i wasn't i wasn't in the toxic environment with both parents now i just have one toxic parent to deal with but my mom her resentment grew towards me so much because she wanted my behavior to change when we moved she expected me to be better to behave better because she was never the parent that would hit me or call me names or stuff like that that was only my dad my dad was the one who would hit me and call me names and say terrible things to me and and take out all that anger on me my mom she was always the quiet one who would defend me behind closed doors. So when, when we moved, she expected me to be different and I wasn't. I still wanted to do what I wanted to do. I still wanted to go out. I still wanted to get high. I wasn't doing good in school. So she was just like, why would I leave my husband for this girl? So now I have two parents blaming all their problems on me and i'm not saying like blaming as if i don't i don't take any responsibility no i understand i understand their pain i understand so um that started it all now me and my mom live alone and i'm still acting bad okay like tiana like you're you're you you playing with me now is probably what my mom started thinking and then guess what guys covid 2020 covid hits covid hits so now instead of my mom going to work every day instead of me going to school instead of us getting that distance that separation we live together 24 7 in a little apartment we're from a house in my, my old town we lived in a house people had their space now it's barely any space so all the problems all the frustration all the anger all the sadness just like cramped up in that room in that apartment so yeah that happened and the fighting we started fighting every single day because i was never a kid that could keep my thoughts to myself ever i always always i never had a filter i always said what was on my mind i always said what was on my mind i 
always spoke my truth and I wish I didn't as much because when you speak your truth you can really hurt others but I swear on my life my intention was never to hurt anybody my intention was just to live this life as best as I possibly could that was my intention but I hurt a lot of people along the way and now I'm paying the prices but let me get back to living in my new situation with my mom we start fighting all the time all the freaking time the relationship just fell out as I tell this story I really understand why I'm homeless now like I, I kind of stopped thinking about the past I let it go but I bet you know, I just hurt a lot of people. And yes, they hurt me. But what what did I do? I'm homeless now. So now I have to think about my wrongs. What did I do? What did I do? How am I going to improve? How am I going to make sure I never do the, these things again? <sighs> but... So yeah, me and my mom start fighting very bad. The story's gonna take like a left turn and like we're gonna pause because I met this boy. And if you know me, I was always in a relationship with the boy. Like I was always in love with some boy. And looking back on it, I know what those purposes were. The purposes of those boys was to distract me from the pain that I was going through at school and at home. So I meet this boy. This boy, this boy, this boy. I meet this boy, we start dating, we change each other's lives completely. And what I mean by that is something about our relationship caused like both of us, I don't know about him, I'm gonna just talk about me. Something about that relationship caused me to have a spiritual awakening. Something about COVID and that relationship with that boy caused me to have a spiritual awakening. All of a sudden, so yes, 2020, it was May, I believe, something happened to my ex-boyfriend he smoked he smoked some drugs that were laced he smoked weed and it was laced with pcp this story is all over the place he smoked weed and it was laced with pcp dust and so he says we don't really know what happened but he went through a psychosis and if it, it fucked his mind up he went through a psychosis it fucked his mind up he was in a mental hospital for like weeks I was heartbroken because this was my boyfriend. Why is, I was thinking like, what's wrong with my boyfriend? I was heartbroken and even though I couldn't speak to him, I couldn't talk to him, I couldn't see him. For the first time in my life, I felt something that I never felt before. I felt this knowing that he loved me. Even though we just started dating, I, I couldn't be with him, I couldn't talk to him, I couldn't see him, I felt something. It was, it was the creator, it was God, it was the universe, it was whatever you wanted, wanted to call it. And his experience of him going under that psychosis woke me up. It woke me up. I can't explain, it, it literally defies logic, I don't know, but that situation woke me up and I was changed forever. That was when I became spiritual. All of a sudden now I have all this wisdom relating to spirituality, I just know things. So this was COVID, deep in COVID. He gets out of the hospital. We just are back together. Everything's fine. I really didn't care about anything going on, like family-wise. I didn't have any, I didn't care about any pain because I was just so in love and I was so distracted. And it's kind of crazy because when I think of when I met him to when the relationship fell apart, all those months, it was just about him. It was just about me and him and us dreaming and daydreaming about the world that we wanted to create together and um i'm just amazed because i as as i tell this story i can really see like i i can really see during 2020 all the struggles and the traumas just didn't even exist anymore i was just it's crazy what love can do it's crazy what love can do but yes, I, like every other relationship, eventually it didn't work out because I was too toxic and too toxic and in too much pain to really treat any boy the way they should be treated. So eventually the relationship fell apart and he left. Um, we 
well it, it's not just it fell apart and he left we were toxic we didn't want to let each other go so we would break up get back together break up get back together but eventually the pain of that i couldn't just i couldn't handle anymore so we just we don't really talk so let's fast forward so we kind of he left my life i'd say at the like the beginning of this year we was together for about like a year and some months so that chapter ended i'd say the beginning of this year i'd say like march is when the love the high the high of love ended and now it's just back to me and back to my pain again so now i had to deal with the pain of my parents the pain of school the, like the school pain that happened now i have this heartbroken i now i'm heartbroken like and um wow guys this story is all over the place it's really hard to explain your whole entire life in a few minutes so i really apologize for the messiness of this whole thing i'm just trying to let truth speak the best that it can so eventually i graduate from high school i graduated this year in june i graduated and i turned 18 last year october 9th 2020 I turned 18 so not to mention I'm 18 and disrespectful to my mom that's like legally I, I don't need to be there so 2021 my mom goes to court and she gets an eviction notice for me for, yes for me so that I don't have to live there I find out that she gets an eviction notice and that I have three days to get all my stuff and get out and I never saw this coming because I was at I was working at Walmart and I was thinking I'm gonna save my money I don't need my ex-boyfriend because the plan was to move in with him and you know no obviously we're not together so my plan was to move out get my own place and just start life on my own but then it turns out you know you have three days to get out the police are gonna be here to serve me papers so my mom she gives me two thousand dollars to get me going on my feet me i'm woke and i'm spiritual so i'm thinking i'm just gonna move to another state and the universe is gonna take care of everything i'm just gonna move i'm gonna take this two thousand dollars i'm gonna move to another state and i'm gonna start my life like by the face that i made i think you guys know how that turned out so i went i chose vegas I don't know why. Why did my dog? I know why. But I chose Vegas. I went to Vegas. It failed. Failed miserably. I called my mom. I told her, Mom, like, this is so crazy. I told her all the things that went wrong in Vegas. I said, I'm sorry I spent your money like this. I really thought this would work out. She said, Tiana, just come back. Come back. I come back. She says, Tiana, you have two months to get another job, to save every penny, and to get the fuck out. So I say, yes, 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 that works, that works. Two months, I'm going to save my money, I'm going to get out. I'm feeling motivated again. And then, what month are we in? We're in June, guys. We're in June of 2021. We're in last month. Well, it's August, right? So we're in June. Um... I get a new job as a server, I'm making tips, I start saving, and keep in mind, I was only at this job for like three weeks, so that's where, yeah, I start saving, I start like daydreaming about the car that I wanted, and the apartment that I wanted, and guess who comes to town? My brother, my big brother, we do not get along, we don't like each other, we don't respect each other, we're disgusted by each other. He comes to town for like two, three weeks. So now I just feel stuck in my little dirty room because I never kept my room clean, but I, I feel stuck there because my brother's sleeping on the couch in the living room. I have to listen to him and my mom get along so well. My mom doesn't even like talking to me, so that's bringing up past trauma. It's just bringing up all this stuff. All right now we are in we are in august we are in this week guys my brother i come home from work one day i come home really angry i have like a nasty ass attitude um 
and my brother he doesn't like it because I was, he was just chilling chilling at my mom's place and then I just come home with this nasty attitude it pissed him off so we get into a really bad 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 argument if you've seen my tiktok post where my brother was calling me stuff like you a thigh you a hoe and stuff like that I posted it but tiktok took it down because it was against community guidelines whatever it said so we get into a really bad fight the next day we get into another fight this time a physical fight this is a physical fight we never got into a physical fight but this was the day we got into a physical fight it was august 9th yes august 9th 2021 he punches me i throw things at him he kicks me i throw more things at him honestly guys i spit on him because i didn't know how to fight a 27 year old man he grabs me he throws me on the ground like he's 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 letting out this anger demon that he has towards me he's letting it out for the first time in his life so he's doing some some pretty mean fucked up things my mom she calls the police the police they say tiana hill since your mom already has an eviction on you from the court legally you are not even supposed to be living here so you are arrested for violating my eviction and i am also arrested for domestic battery for fighting my big brother i go to jail for the first time in my life i go to jail i'm locked up for about a day and a half the judge says i don't need to pay bond or anything i just need to come back for court he lets me go i call my mom i say mom can you come get me from the you come get me from jail she said you cannot come back here i said what happened to the plan you told me i had two months to save up and get out i just need two more months she said you cannot come back here i said mom please i just need two more months she says the same thing you cannot come back here so that's when the realization hits i'm like i, I was start, i started thinking to myself then i'm better off in jail why am i being freed if i have nowhere to go i'm homeless now so as I am sitting in the, the the release room where we just like where everybody gets released, I make a TikTok and I say like I just got sorry this was like me recording the the jail room. I say I just been released from jail and my mother said I can't go back home and then I said I'm in a car with a random I'm in a car with a guy I barely know. This guy that I barely know picked me up from jail. I met this guy because I was walking home one day and he had his car parked and he could see me walking and he was like, you need a ride? And my weird, dumb ass got in the car because I didn't want to walk and that's how I met him. He was a really nice guy. Um, we, we exchanged numbers and since I don't have any friends or anything, I figured I'd, I was desperate. I wanted to get away from that jail, so I called him. I called him and... Um, yeah i called him and he picked me up and um sorry guys i don't even really want to tell this story anymore <sighs> i called him and he picked me up and um i'm back i just needed to take a breather because i was talking for like 30 minutes and i was just getting drained but he picks me up from the jail and we're just in the car driving. I tell him what happens about how I can't come home. He offers if I want to sleep at his place and I did not want to at all. I did not want to. Um, it starts pouring rain really bad. So we had to like, I think we just took the nearest exit and um, he asked if I was hungry. I said, just get me McDonald's or something. I, I get McDonald's and then he starts saying, he'll pay for be, he'll pay for me to sleep in a motel. So I'm like, okay, cool. This guy really wants to help. And then he says, we can even sleep in the bed together. See, so, yeah, I was like, I was like, you know what? Just take me to my mom's place. So he has an attitude and he takes me to my mom's place. Um, 
So when I get to my mom's place, I call 911 because legally, if I go back to her place, I will go to jail again because of the eviction from the court that says I cannot be there. So if I go back, I will get arrested. And when I was in jail, they told me to call the police and tell them that I need to get some belongings and that the police will be there to uh, like basically stand guard. So I call 911, he pulls up really quick and look I, I i go in my mom's place with the officer and she already has stuff packed up like she she was ready for me she already has stuff packed up i go in my room and i look around and i i just grab stuff so yeah i grab some stuff when i get there my brother's hiding in my mom's room he's hiding in my mom's room so i don't i never got to see him and I didn't even make eye contact with my mom. I just ignored her. The police officer asked if there was any way, anywhere I needed to go. I said, you could just take me to a motel. He takes me to a motel. That's where I'm at now. And uh, this is where I've been ever since. I'm just figuring this out. And uh, sorry guys, like I wanted to really give you guys every single detail but i i went on live on tiktok and i gave every single detail and i relived that experience and i was it was it, it messed with me so telling every single detail again is just so bad but if you would like more stories or if you want a story about a specific situation maybe leave a comment and i'll do it i don't know if anybody's gonna see this video but I don't know. I'm not keeping anything to myself anymore. I have nothing to lose anymore. I lost my home. I lost my family. Friends, I can't say I lost friends because I never really had any. I lost the love of my life. I lost it all. So now it's just time to tell my truth and see what happens. And I've got nothing to lose, like I said. So. Thank you for, I don't know if anybody watched this full video. I don't know if even I could watch a whole entire video. Like nobody has the attention span anymore to watch full long videos. But if you watch this video, thank you. Uh, leave a comment, be nice, please. Be nice in the comments. If, if you have something mean to say, just keep it to yourself. I know I look bogus, I know I look dirty homeless nap right now like i said so uh thank you for watching um adios <laughs>